If you've been wanting to see an airbrush nail look, then this is going to be for you. What's up, nail crew? It's Nicole, your fellow Nail Obsessed DIYer. Today, we are testing this Palkus airbrush machine that I'm doing a collab for this one on, and I'm so excited. I have been seeing these airbrush machines all over the place, but I have to be honest. Everybody's been using gels, and I just want to scream slash I cringe the entire time they're doing it because they are literally spraying gel all over their skin which if you know anything about gels and gel safety that's super super dangerous and will likely cause gel allergies so i set out to figure out how i am going to use an airbrush with only stamping polish because stamping polish is nail polish and i still can line my skin and keep that off my skin as much as possible and i'm not spraying gels over them so i'm super excited to show you guys how this looked what all i had to do to figure out how to use stamping polish because spoiler alert stamping polish in the airbrush it absolutely works and of course I'm going to show you all the things that I did wrong and made a big mess with so that when you try airbrush nails you don't have to do that and this is going to be for anybody who wants to try airbrush and does not want to use gels since I'm not using any gels for this mini I'm going to start out with dipping my nails and if you don't want to use dip powder over your nails to use this airbrush you can also do nail polish but for me I absolutely love dip powder so I'm going to do this gorgeous thermal called shouting is roy's love language it was from a ted lasso inspired collection from og dip powder if you are somebody who wants to have ombre nails but you're just not that good at it grab a thermal grab a thermal dip powder because they give you the effect of an ombre without having to do anything and if you're like me and your body temperature is constantly changing when you're inside when you're outside you're gonna get the ombre effect so often so that's this gorgeous color that i'm going with and i dipped two layers on each nail i have builder gel as a base on all my nails so when i'm doing any kind of dip powder i typically only do two layers of dip powder of the color or glitter, you know, shimmer, flake, foil, whatever I'm doing, and then I do a layer of clear over the top. I do the layer of clear at the at the end when I'm using dip liquids. And since I didn't want to use any gels for this mani, I made sure I used dip liquids and did two dips of the color and then one dip of the clear. When you're using a thermal dip powder, it's typically a little bit thicker and denser than normal dip powders. So you want to make sure you stir it up really well before you go and apply it. And I found that it really helps to, when you're using either a flat thermal or a shimmer thermal to pour it over your nail. That's going to help to loosen up the powder as well. This thermal is actually super easy to work with. I didn't even shake it up at all because I actually forgot but once I was pouring it over my nails then it loosened up and you can see it changing that's one of my other favorite things though when you're doing a thermal and you're dipping your nails you can literally see it changing on your nails as you're applying it per my normal fashion I ended up spilling some of it but not too bad it wasn't that much that spilled so one thing that I made sure that I was trying to do is keep my layers really thin anytime I'm going to do nail art especially over top of my dip powder I try to to keep the layers as thin as possible so what that means when you're dipping is that you wipe off a majority of the liquids on the inside of your brush before you even apply it to your nails so when you're applying the liquids to your nails you should just be able to cover your nail with the liquid you don't want the liquid running down into your cuticles or anything like that because then you know that you applied too much liquid and your nails are likely going to be too thick and then pouring over really helps to keep my layers thin as well um, I know some people like to dip their nail in but that just never worked for me and gave me really bumpy kind of funky looking nails that were way too thick so I prefer the pour over method for flats and shimmers and then the lay flat method for glitters flakes and foils which just means you would pour the powder into one of either these little dip cup liners like I'm using or a mini cupcake liner or a regular size cupcake liner and then lay your nail flat onto the dip in between each layer I like to brush off any excess powder that's something else that helps to keep my layers really thin and I make sure I do that over every time I have forgotten once in a while and then I'll notice oh my gosh why does this nail look so much thicker than the other ones oh wait I must have forgotten to brush off any excess powder if you're using a, a clear that isn't super clear, you really want to brush off the excess powder really, really well. The one that I'm using is crystal clear, so it's not a big deal if I forget to brush off some of the excess powder, but I really like to try to do that regardless. Once all your layers of dip powder are done, you can go in with your activator. And anytime that you're using a dark color or a really pigmented color, in between each nail, you can wipe it off on a piece of paper towel or a lint-free wipe. That's going to keep your activator brush from getting colored with 
with like different pigments because if you get it colored with different pigments and different dip colors you're most likely going to transfer some of that powder onto another mani. So let's say you do a white mani. Well, it could end up off white because you didn't wipe off your activator brush from the last mani that you did that was a darker color. Once the activator is fully dry on all your nails, then you can do the buffing, shaping, and filing and do all that prep to make sure your nails are good and ready to go for applying nail art over them. You want to wipe them off with some isopropyl alcohol on a lint-free wipe or a paper towel to really make sure there's no dust left over so that your nail art can be nice and clean. And I'm using these skin protectors since I'm going to be doing an airbrush and spraying around my nails. I didn't want any of the nail polish even to get on my skin. So I've been using these nail polish protector stickers from a cart instead of using like liquid latex. I actually can't find where I put my liquid latex. So these have been really great that I got them. And now it's time for the airbrushing. I was going to just do that airbrush look where people are using it to do an aura nail. But then I remembered I had these really cool stickers and I thought oh my gosh what if I can airbrush cool designs on so I went with the easy color I went with the white my white stamping polish from Maniology is a couple years old so I figured if I mess anything up I need to buy a new one anyways I will just buy a new stamping polish now I'm going to go through all the mistakes that I made first so the first mistake I made was putting the sticker onto my nail and then trying to put sticky base over top of it I have no idea why I thought that the sticky base would just go on the top of it and not be the underneath so I quickly pulled that sticker off and grabbed another one and applied the sticky base to my entire nail before I went and then sprayed the polish on. Since I can't use acetone, I'm actually allergic to acetone. So I was a little concerned about how this would work because every other time that I've seen somebody do this, they've always used a little bit of acetone mixed with the nail polish or the gel. Well, since I can't use acetone or I will break out into like red spots on my hands, I use this non-acetone nail polish remover and uh, it actually worked really, really well. So I was super excited about that. Something that you're going to see me do wrong here is I totally forgot to put the lid on the little airbrush cap where the liquids are because you want to put some of the polish remover into the little container at the top and then drop some stamping polish in. Now you should be smart and not do what I did and put the cap on so you don't wildly fling nail polish <laughs> remover that's mixed with stamping polish all over the place. So I tried my first one and I didn't really like how it was turning out. So I thought okay like this is the very first time I've done it. I'm just going to take some ice purple alcohol and wipe it off and I wipe that off really quickly as long as you move quickly it'll all come off then I went back in with my sticky base and found a new sticker to use that I was going to use now here still I forgot to put the top on the little airbrush machine and something that I realized from the first to the second time that I put the airbrush liquids in you do your little mixture is you need to use more stamping polish when I've seen people do it with gels I see them put like two maybe three drops of gel in that's not what you need to do with stamping polish stamping polish you need a little bit more to actually get it to be darker so on the second pass of using the stamping polish nail polish mixture i noticed that it turned out a lot darker of a white when i put in more stamping polish so that's something i learned as well and i didn't put the sticker on that great up at the top so it ended up looking like my design was more of an ombre but that's okay we're just gonna go with it you know me like if you've watched my videos you know i just go go with what Whatever I've done because this was my trial and error quality of the airbrush machine I was super impressed with I was not sure how it was gonna go how it was gonna work and I, I am so excited to keep trying more designs I have so many more designs in mind now I know I can do aura nails with this and once the stamping polish all dried I went around my cuticles with some more of that that non-acetone nail polish remover. I wiped off any of the excess that was on my skin. Then I topped with the Maniology Smudge Free Top Coat and then went in with the Seche Vide Fast Dry Top Coat. Then I top coated my other nails with Dip Top Coat. I am so glad that the stamping airbrush works. I just saw a video from actually from a nail chemist today saying how dangerous it is to do gels in the airbrush. So to have another option that's a lot safer, I'm super excited for. And if you're still struggling with your basic stamping and you're not quite ready for airbrushes, then come check out this next video where I talk about nail stamping 101. Thanks for joining me today, Nail Crew.